SDFS and Spark The Hadoop Distributed File System SDFS Introduction Hadoop provides a distributed file system and a framework for the analysis and transformation of very large data sets using MapReduce paradigm. An important characteristic of Hadoop is the partitioning of data and computation across many thousands of hosts and executing application computations in parallel close to their data. A Hadoop cluster scales computation capacity, storage capacity and I.O. bandwidth by simply adding commodity servers. Hadoop clusters at Yahoo spans 25,000 servers and store 25 petabytes of application data with the largest cluster being 3,500 servers. 100 other organization worldwide report using Hadoop. So let me give you a more intuitive notion of Hadoop file system and Hadoop environment. So Hadoop is an environment where HDFS is a part of the Hadoop. So Hadoop also contains MapReduce and other different uh, application which are going to be used in this particular framework which is called a Hadoop. So Hadoop file system is a particular file system which basically will, will be using the cluster setup for large scale computations. These computations will be designed using the programming environment such as MapReduce or Spark. So when we say large scale computation that means the data set is of large scale data sets. So this particular platform is good enough to support the computation of a large data set size. So the cluster is basically nothing but a set of hosts which are connected through the network. So it is scalable in the sense as we grow the number of nodes without any problem of network bottlenecks this particular kind of cluster setup is scalable. In contrast to a particular system becoming more powerful by adding more hardware it has a bottleneck of scalability here the scalability is basically assured in this particular kind of application. In this particular setup how this particular large scale computation can be made uh, applicable how this can be exploited for large scale computation. So we are going to discuss the first the Hadoop environment and in particular the Hadoop distributed file system which will exploit or which will be running over this cluster setup. So HDFS will exploit this kind of uh, that means cluster setup and this will be a point of discussion in this particular lecture. So Hadoop is an Apache project all components are available via Apache open source license. Yahoo has developed and contributed 80 percent of Hadoop which comprises of HDFS, MapReduce and other components are also there such as HBase was originally developed at Pandawe department at Microsoft such as Hive also is developed at the Facebook, Pig, Zookeeper and all these particular different variants are basically using this Hadoop file system and it is basically the applications. So HDFS is a Hadoop file, Hadoop distributed file system is a part of Hadoop project. So we are going to discuss this particular component here in this particular lecture. So HDFS is a file system component of Hadoop while the interface to HDFS is patterned 
after the Unix file system, faithfulness to the standards was sacrificed in favor of improved performance of for the applications at hand. SDFS stores file system, metadata and application data separately. With that we will see how this particular data and metadata are two separate entities here in SDFS and it manages them as in the other distributed file system like PVFS, Lusher and SDFS stores metadata on a dedicated server called the name node. So there is a server which is called a name node in HDFS file system. So name node stores the metadata. So application data are stored on the other servers called the data nodes. There will be a data nodes many data nodes 1 to n so on up to n but here there is only one name node. All the servers are fully connected and communicate with each other using TCP based protocol. So SDFS design assumptions single machine tends to fail that is it is prone to fail failing due to the different components also failing like hard disk, power supply and so on. So more machines means the increase failure probability will be there and data also does not fit in a single node. So basically the so this will is a motivation to have a cluster which is basically a scalable and also its basically architecture can be a fault tolerant. So the architecture of SDFS will involve uh, one one name node and many data nodes. As far as name node is concerned, it stores the metadata. Metadata is where the file blocks are stored. That is the name space image and basically also the edit and that is operation log also is maintained. Secondary name node that is it also basically keeps track of or maintaining the secondary name node which is also called as a master or a shadow master. So that means if, if this particular master fails, this particular shadow is basically up to date available and it will switch to the master in that case that is called secondary name node. Now another thing is called data nodes, this is also called a chunk server, it stores and retrieves the file blocks that is the data blocks by the client or a name node it can be this particular information about where these blocks are stored can be obtained through the name node by the clients. These data nodes they report to the name node with a list of blocks that they are storing. So the function of the data nodes which are many in number they are reporting with the help of a heartbeats with the name with the name node. So it reports to the name node, these data nodes they report to the name nodes with a list of blocks that they are storing. So whenever a request comes by the client to store the data nodes or through the name node whenever there is a request comes, so they will be storing and this information will be reported back to the name node so that the metadata can be updated. So name node in SDFS name node is an hierarchy of files and directory. Files and directories are represented on a name node by the I nodes. The file content is split into a large blocks that is of 128 MB and each block of a file is independently replicated at many data nodes. The name node maintains the namespace tree and the mapping of the file blocks to the data nodes. Let us see this particular concept of name node and if let us say a file, let us say one is having the data blocks as 2, 5, 7 and another file 2 having the data blocks as 4, 6. So this is the name node and there will be a data nodes which is storing the, the, the blocks of a file. Now here there is a replication of each block. 
by default it is 3. So, that means, if block number 2 is stored, so out of 3 any 2 out of 4, let us say 4 blocks we are having out of 4 data nodes, any 3 of them will be selected to store the first one that is block number 2. Similarly, block number 5 will be stored on any 3 of them. So, if one node crashes or is down or failed, so a particular data is already available in 2 of the other nodes. So, that is why the availability in spite of failure is assured. That is what we have discussed here. So, SDFS clients wanting to read a file first context the name node for the locations because it maintains the locations of the data block com comprising the file and then reads the block contents from the data node closest to the client. So, once the client, so the client contacts to the name node and name node knows the file blocks and then the addresses of the data nodes. So, then client in turn will contact to the data nodes. and can access the file data that is in the form of a data blocks. So, when writing a data, the client requests the name node to nominate the suite of three data nodes that I mentioned to host the block replicas. Client then writes the data directly to the data node in a pipeline fashion. That means, it will push the data along three data nodes which is given by the, the name node and then single write operation will write them. So, HDFS keeps the entire name space in a RAM, the inode data and the list of blocks belonging to each file comprise the metadata of the name is of the name system called the image. The persistent record of the image is stored in the local hosts native file system called the checkpoint. So, name node also stores the modification of the log image called the journals in the local host native file system. During restarts, the name node restores the name space by reading the name space and replaying the journal. Now, the another important component here is called data nodes. Each block replicas on a data node is represented by two files in the local host native file system. The first file contains the data itself and the second file is the blocks metadata including the checksum for the block data and the blocks generation stamp. Now, during startup each data nodes connects to the name node and performs the handshake. The namespace ID is assigned to the file system instance when it is formatted. Consistency of software version is important because incompatible version may cause data corruption or a loss. Data node that is newly installed and without any namespace ID is permitted to join the cluster and receive the cluster's namespace. So, after the handshake, the data node registers with the name node and data nodes persistently stores their unique storage IDs. Data node identifies the block replicas in its position to the name node by sending the block report Subsequent block reports are sent every hour and provide the name space name node with a update up to date view of where the block replicas are stored on the cluster. During the normal operation data nodes send heartbeats to the name node that I have told you the default heartbeat interval is 3 seconds. And if the name node does not receive the heartbeat from the from the data node in 10 minutes the name node considered considers the data node to be out of service and the block replicas hosted by that hood by that data node to be unavailable. So, heartbeats from the data node also carry information about the total storage capacity fraction of storage in use and the number of data transfer currently in progress. The name node does not directly call data nodes. 
it uses replica heartbeats to send the instruction to the data nodes. So these commands are important for maintaining the overall integrity and therefore it is critical to keep heartbeats frequent on the big clusters. SDFS client, third component is the SDFS client. User application access the file system using SDFS client. So similar to the most conventional file system, SDFS supports operations to read, write, delete files, operations to create and delete directories also. When an application reads a file, SDFS client first asks the name node for a list of data nodes that I have explained and this interaction can be seen over here. So, so client has to first contact to the name node because name node has the metadata and through that metadata it can directly access those set of data nodes which contains those block information, data blocks. So it first writes in a pipeline, this is called a pipeline and then issue a write command. So all these particular data blocks are made or basically is written and then this particular information is basically informed to the name node about the writing of that particular data in a cluster. Similarly, as far as file read is concerned, so SDFS first step is to open a file and then contact the name node to get the block locations and then perform the read operations on these block locations. Now since this particular blocks are stored in a three different uh, copies, so it will try to read any of these three copies. If it is not successful in this read then it may read the another set of copies or may send simultaneously two different read out of three. And once this particular read operation is complete then it will close it. In write it has to inform to the name node when the file is closed but in read it will just close without informing. So here this is the anatomy of a write. So when once this write is complete then it has to inform to the name node that the entire operation is complete. So here we see that uh, for for file writing it will it will contact to the name node. Name node will inform about the data nodes and the data nodes then it will basically write packets, write file and this will be done in a pipeline fashion. It is shown as a pipeline of the data nodes and once it is done then basically the acknowledgement will flow back and then SDFS client will also inform the name node about that write operation is complete. Now there are other issues because here the SDFS is having the, the information about the rack. So most of the decisions of data node placement or a block placement on a data node basically is having the awareness of the, the position of the nodes in which rack and which center all these information are required so that the, the availability in spite of failure is to be ensured in a much comprehensive manner. Thank you.